sinners and heretics, are you prepared to be awash with judgment from the man of the Lord himself, brother? Labaget, look at him. He can see right through you. He knows what you get up to on that, on that website of yours. He knows. You don't have to tell him the six numbers. Many, many, many of you, a frightening amount of you said that Brother Labaget needs a change of appearance, something more fitting of his godly stature. A man so empowered by the Lord needs to show that. Oh, now he is prepared. Now he is prepared. You look at him and you know exactly why he's here. Now I think we're ready to finally return to the adventures of Count Labaget, the petulant of Vermandois, who spent most of his day yesterday getting married. He was very rude to a lot of the guests. He would not, he would not, he would not take their insults. He would not deal with their ungodly, unholy ways. And they refer to him as petulant, but he knows in his heart that he did it for the piety. Look at him. 482. He's yet to go on a pilgrimage because we were saving up for a very dangerously expensive wedding. But we are ready to face the world. Now, we are, of course, uh, kidnapping sinners to make them pay for their crimes. A lot of people said, why not uh, execute some of the sinners as well? I think it's fair to say anybody we get during a war, then yes, if they, if they are a significant sinner, a heretic, we will purge them. However... I feel like it might end up with a diplomatic incident kidnapping rulers and the sons of rulers who are sinners who need to repent and kidnapping them and executing them might lead to some issues. So we might not go for that in the long term, I will admit. But of course, in wartime or, or any people from external rounds, especially, then I think we're happy to pursue that and, and, and enact some justice in this world. What a man. Now, the other suggestion that I like quite a lot is an end game for Labaget the Petulant. So, uh, Cash Cow said, why not go down the learning tree? Why not go for profit? And why not reform the religion? Why not reform it in a much more strict, pious, and holy way? Now, I think that's a great idea, but I think we need a good reason to do it. You know, I, I don't think that this man who would be such a follower of the church's teachings would immediately be like, yeah, no, I'm making my own religion. That's, that's basically heresy, right? I think we should say that if the Pope is particularly unpopey, right now he is very popey, he's compassionate, he's forgiving, he's just, he is a mastermind philosopher, a scholar, and a herbalist. The man is a godly man through and through. We probably have a very high respect for this man. But if we have reasonable doubt that the church is, is no longer uh, a, a holy place, then maybe we could look into making our own church. Not with blackjack and definitely not with hookers. And now we suffer through yet another day of the voices. The voices, of course, of the Lord. It's not a bad voice, of course, depending on your perspective. But as far as Labaget is concerned, he is doing everything he does for the Lord. And that's all that matters, really, isn't it? So I, I think at least our main goal, of course, continues to be uh, let's take Amiens, Valois, Clement, make the Duchy of Valois. That would definitely lend us to doing a lot with our character. Of course, we can build cathedrals, uh, unique cathedral buildings all across this territory. I think there's actually two unique cathedrals we can build. And, of course, we can build a duchy building uh, if we end up getting enough money for that. First things first. We are long overdue a pilgrimage at this point, huh? The wedding is over. It is all dealt with. It's, it's sorted. Problem solved. Now we can focus on the more important things in life than the marriage and love. We can focus on the Lord himself. That's right. Let's get out there into the world. We're going to go on a pious pilgrimage. Now, we can't really afford much of a pious pilgrimage. I'll be the first to admit. Why don't we start simple and go to Canterbury? It's just across the channel. It's going to be an easy journey, I think. Let's... I thought we hired a couple of caravan masters. I guess apparently not then. Um, was this guy not a caravan master that I hired? I guess I've got him as court physician. We can't do both. We could hire a new one. 50 gold though. Uh, it's probably not worth it. You know what? This is an easy journey. I'm not going to worry about it too much this time. We are going to really not take a lot with us. Now, somebody in the comments did say that even though the chance of danger, you can get down to zero. Say, for example, we've got uh, uh, one medium danger, one low danger there. Even if we get that down to zero across the board, you can still have travel events that can make you ill or straight up die. I think it would be a good investment to get some captains here. Where are we traveling that's supposedly adding this one danger? Where is that? Is that our own territory? What, leaving our own, our own domain? I mean, Canterbury itself, uh, fair enough. I mean, it's uh, it's kind of a shithole down there, to be fair. Circumspect. Oh. Never let them know your next move because we're paranoid, of course. It'll be a lot slower, but nobody will ever find us. I think, you know, the rulers, of course, as always, play the character. If we have an option, and we, uh, if we have an option open, we should always take Circumspect. It's going to make us a lot slower. 
but we're never gonna, no one's gonna know where we are or where we're going, and I think that's a great idea. So for our fidelity, we actually can't change any of them, really. Oh, because we're not patient. Fair enough. And that one, you have to be impatient. Fair enough. Okay, we'll just stick with the normal one. And of course, we will go for a more humble approach. Very good. And much more piety on completion, I would hope so. Our intent is zealotry, as it always would be. I mean, with a man looking like this, how could it possibly not be, huh? I think we're ready. We could customize the route and go for go for a longer journey and head around the place. I don't think it's entirely necessary. Let's head out there. Carlo has been recruited. Carlo is our mercenary captain. Let's go. Let's take a look at the world. Herbert is our older brother, Herbert Carling. Amazing. He is a bit of a sinner, but as we said, one sin cancels out one virtue. So actually, he's a very neutral man. He has room for improvement. It would be a C plus at best. Opinion of us is eight, which is fine. That's fine. That's okay. Minus 25 from devilishly uh, coquettish from where we said we will charm the devil himself. Uh, it's to, of course, to return him to the, to the fold. That's fine. That's okay. I think we can trust him. We're only going to be away for a few days anyway. Ah! Now this seems a trustworthy pregnancy, if I've ever heard one. Princess Cecilia is bearing his child. Only a small time after the bedding ceremony at the wedding. That seems very reasonable. Thank you. We do not know much about science, but it sounds good enough to me. I'm finally here, body and soul, in the great church of Canterbury. As the bishop offers me blessings and asks me where I got my fetching shirt, I reflect on everything that had to happen for God to bring me here. I've walked the holy path. We gain the trait Pilgrim. Very nice. First level of Pilgrim, anyway. Of course, we've got to try and we've got to try and max that out. And look at that. We are getting events this time, my friends. Something that alternate timeline Baguette could never do. All he had to do was change timelines and snap his mind in the process. Now you can go, child. I hear Bartholomew mutter when I enter the church. The pilgrim bows before leaving, and I can see the priest's hands glisten with gold. Ah, dear Count, do you also wish to absorb your sins? Pope Alexander has issued an order to grant indulgences to any pilgrims visiting Canterbury. For the right price, that is. Oh, please intercede with God for me. We can spend 25 gold to... To have the priest intercede with God in exchange for a lot of piety. And our pilgrimage, of course, becomes more pious. Be more useful to get one for a bear. We can get an indulgent for our brother, a bear calling. And actually, that's a fair point. It would be more useful. He has at least one sin. But we don't have any virtues at all. I mean, we're zealous, which is, you know, zealous in our mind. Might not necessarily be zealous in the eyes of the church, of course. Uh, how can one buy entrance to heaven? I think we will do it. And I think we will do it for ourselves. Please. Tell God I am beginning my journey as being a, a very holy man, a very holy warrior. As we listen to the morning prayers, Bartholomew and I have a lively discussion that quickly diverts into theological matters. It would be foolish to say that having been made flesh means that Christ inexplicably and incomprehensibly became man from the word, having united together hypostatically. But as Nestorius himself said, Bartholomew refutes, Christ the man could have been made divine, son by grace and not by nature. Oh, well, now listen to this blasphemous nonsense. How dare you? You'll put him on the list of people that we need to, uh, we need to bring here. Oh, there's a 48% chance we gain the zealous proselytizer perk. A permanent boost to converting faith in county because we know the scripture well. Hmm. I think we should be obvious, at least on these pilgrimages, we should be obvious that we are... Trying to be as pious as possible, right? We're not going to go by our interpretation. Right now, we've got no reason to doubt the church. And I think that's going to be a big part of our character's story arc is, you know, depending on how things go here, one way or the other, double downing on the church and believing everything they say and being a nice, pious man, doing everything the Pope wants, or completely the opposite and, of course, reforming our own faith. I think we go for it. Oh, and all listen to this blasphemy. And you can interpret that however you want. Maybe the church is becoming more blasphemous, given that priest is working, of course, on behalf of the Pope. Or maybe we interpret that as... Just a bad egg. Oh, we've learned another lover secret. We could do a lot with that. We could do a lot with that when we get back and eventually get that golden hooks obligation. Uh, not long now, actually. About halfway there. As I enter the sacred grounds, I find Leonard staring at the altar with an absent expression. Leonard, I call him. Well, that is his name, after all. My lord, he says, I'm phased. I have something to ask from you. I hope you can forgive me. This place has moved my soul and agitated my spirit in a way I thought inconceivable. God has spoken to me and his voice is clear, severe, precise. It keeps going and going and going. The only sound I can hear now, the whole world has gone quiet. If I could stay behind, I would devote my life to it. This was, uh, who was this man? I actually have no idea who he is, but he's, he's come on this pilgrimage. And he's asking us for permission to stay. 
My pilgrimage becomes more pious. He becomes a monk forever. He leaves my... Oh, he joined my travel entourage to come here. I can give him permission to stay. I mean, of course, what, what's his liege going to stay? How dare he become a monk in the eyes of the Lord? That's terrible. That would be sinful. He joins Duke Richard's court. I gain 250 piety. Don't we have churches back home? He comes back in, uh, and is a priest at home instead. Drop the nonsense immediately. He becomes my rival, of course. I would stress this out to no end. Because we're zealous. Stay behind to plot against me not a chance. We lose a lot of stress. More stress than we lose paranoia. Um stress because we are zealous there or delightful i shall also make a donation oh the local clergy will greatly appreciate your gesture oh of course that seems good your pilgrimage becomes more pious we gain 20 experience in the pilgrim trait we gain 250 piety leonard becomes our friend Barthelemy, the uh the bishop of canterbury becomes our friend that sounds amazing do we actually make a donation though we didn't actually make a donation but He's very pleased with that nonetheless. Thank you. That is amazing. Very good. You made a generous donation to uh, Bellamy's temples. Wow. And we are known for a level of devotion to our faith. I think that that went perfectly. Far better than all of those other pilgrimages combined in the alternate timeline. This has already been better, huh? We did haggle in the markets of Canterbury too. We gained 15 gold and we gained 100 stewardship lifestyle experience. Amazing. Kent, it has been an honor. We gained determined pilgrim for 10 years. We gained 600 piety. And 10 more trait experience. Amazing. Succeeded with our intent as well. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'm, I'm really curious how you get to that tier 4. I guess going on a long pilgrimage over to Jerusalem or something like that would do it. Kent, it's been an honor. Thank you. Oh, and there's something else, but we'll worry about that in a second. Thank you. Fine. Finish the pilgrimage then. It's not the first time I catch my caravan leader, Sigismund, fiddling around with some flowers he'd been picking along the road. Sometimes I swear I'd even hear him sighing, overlooking St. Orma's holding. Who am I to interfere in higher matters? Uh, s this person is going to join. Sigismund is going to join uh, Count Baduin's court. Or we say, no, you're coming home with me. So clearly he's fallen in love with someone and is picking flowers for her. Uh, I have no time for such juvenile infatuations. We can just convince him to stay. Or we have enough room in court to welcome the both of you. Susanna joins us, but we're annoying Count Baduin because we're pinching one of his courtiers. Is she good? She's not terrible. She would make for a better spy master than I think we've got currently, actually. Um, and she would like us, I presume, for allowing her and her lover to join us. She's a married woman. She is a married woman? This is disgusting. We have no such time for juvenile infatuations. That was a close one. I almost made a horrible mistake there. My journey has been a long one, but I finally come home. While much remains the same, something has changed now. The priests and bishops treat me. That's was a good pilgrimage. That felt much better for this character. Oh, I'm a lot happier with that one. And look at that. We're already like a third of the way there. And actually, that's probably a worthy thing to point out. Herbert didn't do anything wrong during the Regency. He was just a standard, genuinely nice man. I think we should sway him. I think we should sway him. Who are we trying to sway right now? Dime Bear. Who was he? Oh, the Suffragan Bishop. Ah, you know what? I think stick with the bishop, then play the character. It would be nice to keep her there on side. We can also demand a payment from him because we're health head. Sure, there you go. Pay off your obligations. That's fine. Wow. Oh, my God. Uh, we can get any of the northern Spanish kingdoms. We can get Pisa. Oh, that would be an interesting move, wouldn't it? Um, What would that do for us? Would we, be, we, become, a, would we become a republic? I don't know what would happen. I think we would just become the duchy of... Because republics are unplayable currently, right? I think we would just become the duchy of Pisa. That would put us very close to the papacy. Oh my god, that would be a complete game changer, wouldn't it? With William the Conqueror at our back, we could probably take it. Because this man is a disgusting sinner! I could be so persuaded, actually. Because that's quite an easy battle, and it's also a fun little start. Oh, and actually, it's a really good county, isn't it? It's got the Doge's Palace. It's got everything there. Oh, shit. I could be so persuaded. <laughs> oh, it's a kingdom tier title. I think we'd become a king immediately, but I don't know how it would work. Because the target is on the, on the kingdom tier title, right? Shit, should we just go for it? Pope. I have pondered your request, and I have decided to recognize your claim on the Serene Republic of Pisa. There has come to light irrefutable proof that your ancestors did indeed rule the land in ancient times. I mean, you can't argue with it. 
do we work Carlings after all? I feel like uh, I, I feel like that would have probably fallen under it, right? With the unification of uh, Lombardy and all the original Frankish lands. I'm sure that I'm sure there's something adds up there. I'm sure something adds up there historically. Ah, well, well, well. This is interesting then. So he has 1,800 troops. The military strength is vastly inferior to ours. That is, of course, including our 500. But William the Conqueror's thousands. My God, he's got 3,000 special soldiers on top of his like 5,500 regular troops. Whoa. Um, the problem is normally, uh, at least speaking from CK2 experience, going to war with Venice is a bad idea because they just spend all the money on mercenaries and then you get your cheats clapped. So. Do we spend our money on an army of warriors for the Lord so that we can free the people of Pisa from this sinner? I think, yes. Yes, we absolutely do. Uh, where do we begin then? Let's go for some bowmen. I think that's good because we've got light infantry counts with the heavy infantry, right? Then we've got... Uh, you count as spearmen, you count as skirmishers. That's good. That's fine. Then I think we probably want... You can't imagine they've got many horsemen on Venice. Let's have a look. Let's, let's take things a little bit more careful. They do have a lot of horsemen on men as well. Color me shocked. Okay, but let's get some pipemen going after that then. And I think it's time to go to war. Now, we might have to... Oh! The scheme has been exposed. The scheme has been exposed. I think it's probably not worth continuing on with that. Then we'll look for another center elsewhere. Now, somebody suggested going for bishops. Bishops are generally worth a lot. And if there are any sinful bishops... We should be going for them. We should be bringing them over. They've got a lot of gold. And normally, they're worth quite a good... Okay, so you're, you're totally neutral. Normally, they're worth quite a good amount of cash, too. I think probably the quickest way to do it is set up a... What is it? The character finder? I guess sorting by learning is the best way for it. You can't just say, like, is a religious man. Um, we could say Christianity, though, but that's fine. Okay. Uh, Prince Bishop, you are... You're fine. The Suffragan Bishop is also fine. Nothing, no, no, no problems there. I've sorted by learning, so that might be the quickest way to uh, find them all here. You're also fine. This man is also fine. Wow, who could have predicted that the bishops might actually not be sinful? This is very shocking. In fact, I can't see it. Oh, a sinful bishop. My lord. Get him. Bring him over. Abduct this man. A son and heir. Matthew Carling. Matthew Carling. Wow. There he is. Son and heir did not inherit uh, any sort of variant of the intelligent trait. But you know what? Welcome. Matthew, I shall name you Croissant. Croissant baguette. Thank you. Blah baguette. Uh, Carling. Thank you. Join me. What a child. What a legend. Uh, can, we can't educate him personally yet, can we? Oh, we can. We can. We're just going to immediately take him under our wing. Now, do I want to educate him in anything? Should we Should we really play the character and go, boom, learning education? I'm going to say no. Let's see where his strengths lie. We're a pretty good educator across the board, right? We're, we're, we're pretty all right, and we've got some traits I would definitely like to pass on to this child. Zealous and, of course, ambitious. Maybe because we're paranoid. I think this is very reasonable because we're paranoid we wouldn't trust anybody else to educate this child. Is this his son and heir after all? Maybe the other children, of course, who, who gives a shit. I've only just noticed that Count La Baguette has three brothers, two of which are bishops. I promise that was nothing I've done. That was no meddling for story purposes. You are also a sinner. My own brother, Hugh Carling. You know, no brother of mine. No brother of mine could be a sinner. Oh my god, we already have golden obligations. I forgot that we got it yesterday during the, uh, during the marriage, didn't we? How annoying. Okay, uh, in that case, I think we should probably start doing something with that, huh? Let's have a look at our hooks then. Um, you are, what are you, like a grandmaster or something? Oh no, Duke Berthold the Bear. Oh, fine. Blackmail him. Boom. Very nice. Okay, that's one payment. Let's get you blackmailed. That's two. Amazing. Let's get you blackmailed. That's three. Amazing. And you are a duchess. Well, they're all saying yes. Disputed heritage. 100% she'll agree. 60% chance. Okay, that one did not work. That was, that was not really so much of a surprise. Expose him. Let the world know that he is a sinner. And now let's get ourselves some money, I think. Oh my god, look at the cash. 95 gold from her. 50 gold from you. 50 gold. Tied these sinners. And this money we will put into the Lord's army so that we can free Pisa from the sinner. We could hold out a little bit more, to be fair, and actually get that final six gold. Um, well, I'm not going to fabricate hooks on people. We're not dishonest. 
We would never deceive people. That is a sin. We would never do such a thing. But we will make sinners pay for their crimes. Hopefully, it will teach them a lesson. Amazing. Good. 375, just like that. That's how we do it. Okay, let's throw out some... Uh, I think we've got to throw out some pipemen, right? Ready for this war. Can't station them anywhere, sadly, because um, I haven't really got anywhere else. We could go as far to increase the army size. If we're going to increase anybody, it should be the armored footmen, right? Because they'll get those bonuses from being stationed. That's expensive. I think we can afford it. I think we can afford it. It's all fine. Unbelievable. My God, du Duchess Matilda again. I was about to call her Duchess. <laughs> I was living in France too long. Okay, let's have a look then. Can we blackmail her again? Uh, we can blackmail you. I'm just going to blackmail everybody that we get the option to, to be quite honest. They might have some pocket money that we didn't know about, of course. So because we've already blackmailed Duchess Matilda, we can't blackmail her again. She's already paid off her obligations, sadly. Um, we can expose her still, though. That would be very cruel. Be very cruel. We can expose the other secrets, right, that we know. We have a strong hook on her. No secret that can be used for blackmail. You already have a superior hook on her. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, if you're a non-believer, we expose it. The world shall know. The world shall absolutely know. Very good. I'm happy with this. And we can demand two more payments for another 20 gold. Fantastic. This is working out well. Sinners are paying for their crimes, and we are using the money to build up an army to take a kingdom. This seems like a very good middle ground. Okay. So, none of these make sense. I think that eventually we are, of course, going to be trying to build churches, cathedrals, you name it. Cutting cornerstones might make a lot of sense. So I think we'll probably go for that one. Do we want to move over to a different tree? Maybe we want to start going for theology. I think we... Uh, how old is our guy? I think we would start moving into the theology tree maybe around 40 years of age. So another 10 years with... Uh, uh, honestly, as, as the intrigue is just going fine. Going for schema would definitely... Uh, I mean, it's just going for twice schemed. Would basically quadruple our income. But we'd make so much goddamn money from that. Oh, it's a hard choice. It's a really hard choice. Do we just keep going for Arctic and save money overall? Or do we try and make more money and punish more sinners? When you put it that way, I feel like schema does make a lot more sense. I could I could go for it. I think we could... When can we flip back over? Uh Oh, this year. In like a few months. Oh, fantastic. Okay. We will flip back over then. I should be focused more on... Oh, Convergent Blood is good. Bear in mind, this is our Dynasty Head that's getting this stuff. Chance of reinforcing a general trade up by 30%. This is our Dynasty Head, which is, again, some other distant cadet branch of the Carling Dynasty. Nothing we can do, unfortunately. Yeah, I think this works a lot better. Punishing sinners should come above simply making money, even if we are going to use that money to build churches. And another person. A secret held by Podesta Mariano of Urbino. How sad. How tragic. <laughs> this is very good. This is very good. Blackmail. And thank you. This guy's at least uh, a count. So that's another 50 gold for the coffers. Very good. Wow, this is working so well. Very happy with this one. Oh. Prince Bishop Werner tried to murder somebody. Uh, get him blackmailed. How could you do that, Prince Bishop? How could you do that? And that's 50 gold from him as well. This is just cash. Just non-stop cash flow. Very happy with it. We could start trying to uncover secrets in Pisa. Give us more of a reason. I've been calling it Pisa. I've been looking at Venice. I'm a fool. I'm a fool. I'm a fool. But... <laughs> I even said Pisa out loud and then I looked at Venice. That is a uh, lesson in getting more sleep, everybody. Don't learn from my lessons. This is what happens. Your brain starts to rot and 50% knows what it's doing. The other 50% doesn't and they're constantly at war. Inside me are two wolves. Oh God, okay. These schemes are not going well. We could convince some people, of course, but... I'm not paying money to make money. That doesn't make any sense. Pay people to scheme against somebody? No, this is my job and my job alone. If we're bribing them to help us kidnap someone, that makes them a sinner. Whereas if we do it, we know we're doing it for good, honorable, and just reasons, right? I think we cancel this one. 23% success chance. Ah. These things happen, don't they? Back to skullduggery, I think. This will, of course, go super, super fast. We'll, we'll probably get to schema before we... Before we hit 40, that's very... Yeah, every two years. One, two, three, four, five. 
Well, to be fair, it is possible we could get there. Ah, uh, you know what? See it through. Let's let's keep going with it. Twice schemed is is really going to be the big one. Now, this is an interesting idea. I thought if we sort by rank and then scroll down below the counts, that will show the priests, the bishops, the unlanded. But I I didn't even think mares across the realm, corrupting this fine civilization. You are a sinner through and through. So we will kidnap him. Abduct. There we are. <laughs> Ignore me. Don't worry about it. Whoa. 5% chance he's paranoid. Right. Okay. So we won't be able to get somebody like him, but this is a much better idea because they are not landed. So we don't get any sort of uh, negative to the abduct scheme because of that. But they will still have money, right? So we've got barons and mares and oh, there's another sinner. Another sinner that needs to be taken into custody. How? Hang on. Is there? Oh, they do count as rulers. Oh, interesting. So suppose if you just have any landed title, it's a minus 50. Bollocks. Well, that makes things a little harder than I expected. I thought I'd found a, a real golden goose then for a second. Okay, fair enough. If we come down below the barons, will that be the bishops? Because I feel like that should be our top priority, right? Uh, there is only one bishop. That's unfortunate. And what are you exactly? You're, you're people's spy master. I suppose we could kidnap people like that. Trying to kidnap a spy master probably won't end well. 28% chance. I could see that one potentially working. It's a real shame the character finder closes whenever you take any decision. Because I'm trying to I'm trying to find a good person here. Um, we could type in the... Why type in like lustful? Well, is it or? Or is it and? Uh, inclusive or... Because uh, I like to say like lustful or if they have... Slothful, or whatever the hell it's called in this one. Um, lazy, I think it is. No, I have no idea what, what they refer to the sins as in this one. Um, what is this one that's... Okay, vengeful. I suppose you don't have the sins in this, do you? You have just sins for each church instead. Right, okay, so it only shows one or the other. That's quite frustrating. All right, fine. We'll punish all the lustful characters first, and we'll go through one by one. We just got hit by a load of stress then, and I'm not entirely sure why. 135 out of 300. That's okay. I bear in mind we're not doing hunts or feasts or anything. We have plenty of, of ways to get around that. Uh, we have learned that Count Ludbert is trying to murder someone. Absolutely. But whatever. Uh, very, very disgusting behavior. Blackmail him. Blackmail him and get me some money, please, if you don't mind. Thank you. Uh, we don't need any more claims. Unless you do actually have a claim on a kingdom this time. <laughs> Rather than me. I mean, I know Venice is a kingdom and I know Pisa is a kingdom too, but... I suppose Pisa, in some ways, is arguably better because then we're right next door to the papacy. And actually, that worked out very, very well, all things considered. What? Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. He has taken on a secret lover, an archbishop. Unthinkable behavior. Give me that money right now. Good lord, man. Hey, you know what's a good way to lose stress? How about our uh, pilgrimage? <laughs> Let's go on a pious pilgrimage. And you know what? Let's go all the way to Jerusalem this time. Let's go all the way to Jerusalem. So, uh, we're going to swap Circumspect out for... Because a paranoid man would be more concerned about his horrible murder inside a forest, I think. So, we're going to go for a forest guide. We've got four medium dangers. But you know what? That's just part of the, part of the experience, really, isn't it? We're just going to have to deal with that. The The coast is clear. Literally. Jerusalem itself is, is the dangerous area. So that's, that's understandable. Okay, we've got a good caravan here. Carlo, you are appointed, my friend. That went up by like 16% speed. Good lord. Our goal, of course, is always zealotry. We will be going... Much more piety on completion. Much more piety on completion. Piety remains interesting. Shall we spend all the money to bring that? I, I don't want it to be pompous. I don't want him to go on like a, you know, on, on, like a, on like a litter being carried in through the bloody gates or anything like that. Simultaneously, I want to bring everybody, every possible person on this pilgrimage. So we can go for, our, for contemplative instead, which will earn us more piety now. So we'll definitely do that one. And we'll take everybody with us. This is going to be a long and cumbersome journey. 17 in the entourage. It's going to cost us 204. But I think I'm happy with it. Let's get going. Oh! Croissant has become rowdy. Ah, he would be a warrior of the Lord, then a holy warrior. Or we go for intrigue. Train him, much like his father has, to uncover the sinners of the realm. And I mean, what a goddamn good job we've done. Not, uh, what a, what a, what a, a blessed and gracious job we've done. 
uncovering so many sinners. Without us, that bishop would have never had to pay for his crimes. He wouldn't have exposed murderers and cheaters and liars and scum and heretics. My son, you will follow in Baguette's footsteps. Excellent. This is useful to know. We've learned of somebody's lover secret. Lumber again. My friend. You're a disgusting you're a disgusting man. Can we just blackmail him immediately? I guess because we've already blackmailed him before. It's unfortunate. The tears of Saint Nicholas. Even when on our pilgrimage, the priests still hold mass every Sunday. It's held out in the open where no church is nearby. And early this morning, a storm rolled in and has not ceased. Undeterred, a zealous priest is standing out in the pouring rain, giving a sermon about perseverance in the face of adversity. Despite this, the size of his audience is rapidly dwindling as the discouraged adherents seek refuge from the torrential rain. What is rain to a faithful Catholic? 26% chance we become ill. That's what rain is. Um, we would do it. We wouldn't even think about turning back to our tent. And I think we actually managed to dodge the illness. Passing by the campfire, a pilgrim from another entourage is telling the story he once heard of some count from a faraway place called Vermandois to vacuous laughter. He notices my hesitation. The storyteller looks at me reassuringly. Don't worry, my lord. This is surely about some other high and mighty nobleman. Really now, tell me about this count. We sit by him and, learn, uh, and, and lose stress. Or we say, guards, fetch me my whip. Which, of course, is not the right way to be a pious man. Or perhaps it's time I found some others to travel with. But that will stress us out because we're stubborn. So, let's go for it. Let's sit by the fire and hear about this supposed man. We can have a laugh about it because they might think that we're some creepy, sneaky man. But we know we are doing the Lord's work. I'm stirring from my relaxing trip across the sea when I hear a sudden shriek. I sprint into the uh, stores below deck and I'm horrified to find a pigeon besides the shredded remains of our surprise. It, it's a surprise. It was a surprise, though. Its feathers stretched thin against its fell, bloated belly. In my rage, I could have killed the repugnant winged menace right there, but I am stopped by my Chancellor Raoul. Hark, stay your hand, you brash swine. Don't you know that it's bad luck to kill a bird at sea? I shall show mercy, or nothing will stop me from killing this blasted bird. We gain low supplies for two years. We change the current weight. Oh, it changes his current weight by 10. Oh, no. He's going to become a bit more a bit more skinny. Raoul gains opinion of us, though, but we do become stressful from that. Or we kill the bird. We kill and eat the bird. We upset Raoul. There, we can eat the pigeon, though. Ah. Uh, what would he do? He, I, I mean, mercy, uh, mercy is the Lord's way. We will show mercy. For better or worse, we will show mercy. If this kills me, I'll be very upset. Traveling towards Jerusalem, I am in constant awe of the vastness of, and, and wicked whims. Traversing the sea. Ah, that was an important word I skipped over. Towards our destination in Jerusalem, I am in constant awe of its vastness and wicked whims. And ridden out the storm the previous night this morning, we are greeted by a magnificent rainbow stretching from horizon to horizon. Yes! Feel the presence of God! Oh. My wife, what are you doing? Princess Cecilia is trying to further my mandate, which is fine, but she is fucking it up. Um, I think we should promote authority instead of trying to tax the people. Even though that money we could, of course, spend on churches and whatever else. Pierre died. Pierre Carling. Oh, no, that was one of the priests. A sad time. Good night, Pierre. Thank you for visiting. The sea is calm and forgiving today. Still a boulder uh, and a powerful wind would... Still as a boulder. Oh, still as a boulder. Oh, I thought you were saying that there was we were about to hit a boulder. And a powerful wind at our banks to boot. It seems it'll be an easy day for the rowers below, but then I spot a mangled corpse of a ship buried nose first on some jagged rocks ahead. We could investigate. We may find something of value. I feel like we should investigate and find out what's happening. We'd, oh no, hang on. We gain 90 stress because we're paranoid. Nah, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. He'd be, he'd be too afraid to investigate such a thing. Oh my god, our stress level is already out of control here. Small changes in dialect, slightly different customs. It was easy to miss at first, but the small change led to large ones, however. And now the French living in Andrew have begun to identify as Angevin instead. We will see how the situation develops. We'll see how the situation develops, because we've been at sea for months now. Oh, a 22% chance of spending 15 gold and capturing this sinner. Oh, God. We have to do it. Because we're stubborn. He avoided us. I'm trying to capture this man. He, he was somebody relevant, but now he's just a wandering, insane lunatic. A wandering, insane man afflicted by syphilis. Oh. Uh, his luck will not last. Try again. Maybe we'll stop that for now, actually. We can just abandon that without taking stress, even though we are stubborn, right? Oh, we've learned of someone else's lover secret. Good God, we are uncovering secret after secret after secret. 
This is amazing. We found loads while we've been on the way here. Mayor Fulcard is a deviant. Disgusting. Prince Archbishop Willem's lover. We should blackmail her too. Hold on a second. We'll worry about we'll worry about the Lord in a moment, please. Um, no, we can't because we've just sent a blackmail request and it's paused. Traveling the sea towards Jerusalem. I am in constant awe of its vast and wicked whims. I feel the presence of God. We've had another rainbow. Wow. We've gotten so pious and we haven't even started the proper the proper pilgrimage, right? Wow. This is nuts. And here we are. We finally arrived. No other city in the world has quite the history like Jerusalem. I have walked the holy path. They gain either the pilgrim or the pilgrim trait. Very good. The pilgrim or the pilgrim trait. Excellent. I have walked the holy path. Look at us. Oh, good lord. But, sadly. Sadly, we have broken down. The stress was too high for too long. Feels I'm being constantly distracted by lascivious thoughts and erotic fantasies. Sequester yourself. Lose a friend. Become reclusive. Does, how, how does reclusive help us? We lose less stress, but we also lose stewardship. Honestly, that's not terrible. Dedicate ourselves to the Lord. That's fine. Monks are reclusive, arguably, I think. There is too much going on. Hold on. We need to slow things down a little bit. This is getting out of hand. Okay. Hello there. As I enter the sacred grounds, I find Yud staring at the altar. Yud's, I called him. My lord, I have something to ask of you. I hope you can forgive me. This place has moved my soul and educated my spirit in a way I thought inconceivable. He is also wishing to stay in Jerusalem. And of course, we would immediately say yes. Join us. Stay in this realm. And now we've had another mental break. Fucking hell, we are falling apart. Okay, um... We become irritable. We gain high blood pressure, which might kill him dead. He might just have a heart attack and die. Uh, instead, we're going to hide away and make the courtiers lose opinion of us. It's a necessary evil, I'm afraid. Before we continue, hold on. We've got lots to do here. There's so much happening. It's, it's a very complicated situation. Okay. Let's get some of these hooks going. Very good. A lot of money on the table here. Very nice. Means we can come home and maybe have a feast in the name of the Lord before we begin uh, liberating the sinful kingdom of Pisa. And, more importantly, prepared for anything. Swift execution. We're not going to execute anybody unless they are absolutely a sinner. We'll just go prepared for anything for now. Of course, we're going to have to go down the other tree regardless if we want to get that other trait. So, let's have a look at the uh, power sharing. How are we looking? Actually, everything's fine. Loyalty, she is self-interested because she has a slightly lower opinion of us. We need to sort that out when we get back. Try and win her over somehow, I think. Let's go back to Jerusalem, then. How are we looking? Just waiting on... Waiting on whatever to happen to happen. We organized a religious procession. Amazing work. As I walk into the church, formidable guilt comes upon me. The light illuminating the altar like a sunny summer day. It's so dense I feel like I could touch it. What kind of life am I living? What kind of count could I be, your father or son? If I don't change my flagellant nature, the only light I'll see is the fires of hell. Here, I am born a new man. Because we're zealous. Oh, shit. Because we are... Uh, somebody loses their lover secret. Okay. Um, because we're zealous, we lose stress for losing flagellant. I may as well enjoy it for the time being. Oh, no. This is supposed to relieve stress, not uh, destroy him. Oh, Lord. And... Uh, as our time at the sacred site draws to an end. We have, we have taken our devotion to the Lord and Christianity. This being my second pilgrimage. I can't help but compare it to my previous visit to Canterbury and all its holiness. Very nice. We got another 40% for that one. We preach the wrath of God. I think that's very appropriate. Jerusalem, it has been an honor. We gain a whopping 2,000 piety. Very good. I feel like we actually had less events that time compared to when we went to Canterbury. We had a lot of events, of course, on the way there. Let's travel back. Let's travel back. And then I think we prepare to take a kingdom tomorrow. Whatever the Pope asks of us, we can do it. The Pope's hosting. Uh, hosting he's hosting a tournament. Oh, we've got to be back first. Oh, I want to join the Pope's tournament. No! I think we're going to miss it. Shit. Maybe he didn't invite us. Well, probably my duties is uncovered a secret held by Duke Berthold again. He's taking a noble woman as his lover. Unthinkable behavior. We've gained the trade traveler very good because we've done so many pilgrimages at this point. Nice. Now we can start getting experience in that one. Fantastic. And we are back. We gain 11 trade experience in Wanderer. And finally, it is good to be home. Great work. I'm so glad the pilgrimages are working now. I do think it was the right call to wait a little longer and reboot everything. This is this has justified my, my long-term game plan here. I think it's all paid off. I'm happy with it. Thank you all for joining me today.
I'm glad you could all be here to appreciate this. Be the beginning of a fantastic transformation for Count Labaget, not only in the clothing department, but also in terms of his piety. We have to... Oh, he's already a prolific pilgrim. Oh, shit. Labaget is well known in the holy circles as a man, true, uh, true man of the world. Other pilgrims often look to him for guidance in both spiritual and navigational matters. We've already maxed out. I was going to say one of our big journeys should be maxing that out, but we've already done it. Well, shit. Okay. Great work then, I suppose. Hey, amazing. I think we need to have a feast or some sort of stress loss, right? We need to do something here to, to get our guy a bit more in control of the situation. But you know what? We'll worry about that tomorrow. Thank you all for joining me. Come back very soon.